Okay, convene the meeting at 4.01 p.m. It's Thursday, October 28th, 2021. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify me, the chairperson, at this time. Anybody else recording the meeting? Don Moran is recording the meeting. Hi, Don. Um, okay, let's do a roll call. Uh, please say here when I call your name. Uh, Mayor. Not yet. Uh, Butch. Here. Chief. Here. Uh, David Muscaratalo. Here. Carol Collins. Amy McMahon. Here. Steve Dracolich. Here. Jen Strumsten. Here. Liz Gilman. Here. David Singer. Here. Gene Wall. Here. George Vandalinder. Marlo. Here. I'm I'm for George also. Okay. Fernando. I see you, Fernando. Here. <laughs> uh, Chief Hay, I don't see him. Um, Eric Turog, I don't see him. Um, Laura. She's not here. Um, Ed Jarvis, I know he's here. here. Uh, Greg Diefendorf. Uh, Peter MacGyver. Present. Neil Joyce. Here. Dennis Ross. Here. Katrina. Here. Adam. Here. And I don't know if Roger will be joining us anymore, but Roger, you here? Roger was going to join late. He's coming back. He was in Greenfield all day today. Okay, good. Okay, that's the roll call. Uh, the, the other set of business that we have to do before we get into the belly of the meeting is the minutes. Um, if you did not get uh, the minutes for the October 14th meeting, can you please tell me now? Okay, assuming everyone got the minutes, can I hear a motion to approve the minutes? I move. Who is that? Butch. Second. Who's the second? Steve. Thank you, Steve. Any discussion about the minutes? Okay. So all those, I'm going to read down the list, and if you approve the minutes, say yes. Mayor, not here yet. Uh, Butch, yes. Chief, yes. David Muscaratalo, David, yes. Carol. Uh, Amy. Yes. Steve. Yes. Jen. Yes. Liz. Yes. Jean. Yes. David. Yes. Okay. M minutes are approved. Okay. Um, next thing we're going to talk about is the uh, te this temporary fire station. Neil, what's going on with the temporary fire station? So uh, since our last meeting, um, both the modular company Vanguard, um, as well as the um, apparatus Bay company, New England builders uh, have been on site. They are working and proceeding with their punch list work. Um, notably today, uh, they were on site with a third party subcontractor to apply a sealant at the base of the apparatus base structures. So we are hoping that this will greatly diminish um, water infiltration problems that we have seen um, since we took occupancy. Uh, we're supposed to get a good dose of rain on uh, Saturday. So hopefully that will give us an early indication of how successful the efforts have been to date. It is my understanding uh, from an earlier conversation with Vanguard that they have completed their portion of the punch list. And I am expecting a report from Roger. Um, I would, I expected it before we resume the meeting, but um, he was in transit. So uh, I will get caught up on where we are relative to the apparatus bays and New England builders. Okay, anything anybody wants to add? Chief, anything you want to add? 
Uh, no other than the uh, firefighters are putting a tremendous amount of effort into making it home. Uh, you know, most of the work has been wrapping up. Uh, we've been able to make some significant improvements uh, since we moved in, and uh, it's been a lot of hard work, but we're getting there. Good. Thank you. Uh, David? Just a question. Is the... Uh... Is the water issue the last punch list item, or are there others? And you said Van got wrapped up there. So is the is the water just the last issue? Um, I, truthfully, Dave, I don't know. I think that there may be some other minor issues, but I think the water is the biggest um, concern as of right now. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, Mayor. I saw Carol Collins is here as well. Thank you. Um, we just got the temporary fire station uh, update from Neil and um, David asked the question. Um, David, can you repeat that question again? The question is, is since Vanguard is completed with their punch list items, I was wondering if the water issue was the last punch list item. <laughs> it certainly is based on what I saw today. Okay, any other Questions or comments from the committee? Looking at everybody. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Neil. Um, now, I, I understand there's going to be an architect's uh, presentation. So, who should I yeah. hand this off to? Katrina? Uh, yes, I would like that opportunity, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, what I will ask Adam to do is to start bringing up on the screen some information about the design that we've developed to date uh, with the input critically from the chief and his team. Uh, and we will go through all the parts of it that are new to most of you. Uh, you know, most of you have seen some of what the work has been. Uh, and I do want to give you some orientation to this. So I'm going to walk you through plans and we'll uh, see um, kind of 3D images of what we've uh, designed to date. But we'll start with the site plan here and the footprint of the building on the site. We have uh, the different colors mean different parts of the building. Bays are on the left. North is to the right where Main Street is, orientation on this plan. Uh, and you can see the driveway into the, uh, into the lot along the bottom of the page. Um, so the bays on the left with bay support being the yellow. Then on the right-hand side of the floor plan, there's living, administration, bunking, and public areas as part of the building. One of the changes from the last time we showed you this plan was the generator location on the west side of the building. It moved from kind of the southwest corner of the building to where it is now behind the ambulance base. And we did that relative to uh, making sure that the secondary electric service is shorter. Uh, so that's less expensive uh, than it would be if it had to run farther. Uh, so th those are some of the minor things about the site plan that I did want to mention. We do have space currently shown on the plan uh, towards the bottom for the cupola. And we did see the pictures from Roger today uh, uh, of the cupola that was removed from the former building. Um, and we saw what shape it's in. Uh, and it sounds like there may be a bill, uh, a uh, bell going back in there at some point, but uh, that's for someone else to work out at this point. On the lower right hand side, close to Main Street, we do have an area set aside for memorial. Um, and what the nature of that is, we don't know yet. That's something that needs to be worked out during design. So at this point, I'd like to move from the site plan to the building floor plan. I think that's the next sheet. Katrina, can I ask yeah. a question? Oh, sure. Anybody uh, can jump in and ask questions, please. That cupola that you have listed there, uh, what if that was to become the memorial? That could become the memorial. Uh, there's, there's no, we don't have any issue with that. You know, we were just saying we know that we need some footprint on site for a variety of elements that uh, the city and the fire department want to incorporate here. So, you know, we're open to ideas about the design. Certainly the, um, the recovery of it off the building and then it's kind of repair will certainly impact what, what you'll want to do with it. 
but that's flexible. Um, you know, it's not a set in stone location on the site. We have opportunities here. Okay. Uh, does that answer your question? You? Just a question. Sure. Um, I had somebody approach me locally that um, was interested in restoring it. Um, they're quite talented. Um, they would even go leaf it. Um, and I'll just pass that information on to you later, but just wanted to give you a heads up on it. They would gold leaf the uh, cupola. You're saying? Yeah, I don't. I don't know that it would be real gold, but <laughs> no, I understand. Yeah. I, just, I, I thought you might be talking about the bell. And I, I, yeah. Whatever. Okay, so um, is that something, Katrina? You want? The, is that that's not for Katrina though? That would be for the chief, right? Yes. That yeah. Would be yeah. I guess. Yeah, it would be for the chief. I guess. All right, so okay, chief heard your message and the message been given, so that's good. Okay, uh, any other questions about the site plan before we move on to the floor plan? Can I just ask? A, and this is, I'm sure, not this is yeah. not a high priority for everyone, but um, given what I've seen with the temporary station and kind of the way that the firefighters are using space outside, partly because mm -hmm. they have to. Um, <laughs> I I know that we aren't able to acquire that piece of land, sort of on the you know that backs up onto the railroad tracks. Will we have access to that? Will we have like can we acquire a use an easement or of some kind or something? I'm just wondering because I just look at this site and it's it's compact, it's urban, but yeah. Right. Uh, if if I may, Mayor, just for a moment, mention the patio area, which is showing yeah. kind of in the central portion of the the plan, just outside the living area. Um, and that's along an interior ramp. You'll see the inside parts of the plan that lead to, you know, this is where they can have a grill. It can be secluded, have a little, you know, uh, either shrubs or a low wall type of privacy there. Uh, so there is space on the on the plan showing right now where that they can occupy outside the building. Okay, and Mayor, you wanted to also mention. I just wanted to chime in about the piece of property. Um, it's been a while since I checked in with um, the folks that control that property. And um, it didn't look promising then uh, for us to be able to purchase it, but uh, for reasons that probably don't make a lot of sense. Uh, so I, I will get to it in good time. Uh, and go back around to them and try to uh, try to persuade them to let us have that property as opposed to purchase that property. Let's. I've been anxious to talk about a sale sale till we bought the property number one and number two um, till we see where our budget's going to end up. And Katrina, this site plan as it's drawn represents what we own present day. That is correct. The piece of land uh, shown there with the dot dash property line is the piece of land that has been purchased recently. Yes. It does not include the parcel that we were just mentioning along the railroad tracks, which is a little bit downhill uh, as well and is not, you know, not necessarily being looked at at all for for uh, occupying. Okay, did that answer your question? Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? I, I have a, so if you're on the west side in the parking lot mm -hmm. and you want to get to the east side on the parking lot, there's no around the building. That is correct. There is no space for such a thing. Uh, the building okay. takes is up a majority. Yeah. Or is that just because the land won't tolerate it? Uh, the uh, land is not configured in such a way that we can put it that way. Will that pose a problem for anybody? The chief has not expressed any concern about that. They can go in, they can go in the bay. And mm -hmm. right. and everything's, all closed. The way around. everything's closed. You can't get from one side to the other. You, you would be able to walk. Around that way. Yes. Okay. Yes. So not isn't there, a door, isn't there, a, isn't there a doorway, a door at the bay? I can, I can see a little yes. door there. Yes. So they can go in the bay. No, I understand that. I just thought that if everything was closed and, you know, somebody needed to walk around the building. Well, uh, let me clarify the parking that's arranged off of Coombs Ave is really the responder parking. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it is not the public area of parking. Uh, and I believe there's parking along the street as well as what's shown at the bottom of the page uh, that can be used for public parking and entrance into the building. Yeah. David, there may also be an opportunity to move along the southern end of the building, even though it's not the city's property. Uh, right. There is a, a narrow grassed area um, immediately to the south of the apparatus bay that theoretically you could walk around. Okay. Thank right. you. David, the public has no need to go back and forth at all. So it would only be the firefighters who would ever need to go back and forth. Okay. Uh, as long as the chief's okay with it, it just, I was so curious looking at it and I thought maybe I should ask. So I did. All, all good questions. Um, and I'd rather answer questions than, than leave something uh, in doubt. Uh, so if we can go to the floor plan. Okay, so this has a lot more detail than uh, the last time the committee saw it. Uh, and uh, with interim discussions with the chief and mayor and Butch, uh, we got some really good feedback and we're able to look at uh, maintaining proper flow uh, and operations within the building that make the most sense for, for the way the chief is running a department. So what you're seeing in the, you see the bays off to the left with all of the vehicles planned in there, and this includes a third ambulance as requested um, so that the bays on the um, right-hand side of the, the red area, those are longer to allow for all of those vehicles to fit. Uh, what we have as a connection from the living and uh, office area on the secure part of the building is a straight run through the great room uh, or kitchen dining day room area going down the ramp into the base right where Adam's running his cursor. So the bunk area is along the east side in green with single user restrooms and a laundry room and lockers in the hallway. This is a secure area that feeds right into that living area and then proceeds towards the bay. So it's a straight shot. That's something that the chief was uh, very particular about and we wanted to make sure that we could do that with all of the other functions remaining in place. All of the support rooms that feed the bay and support the bay. The exercise room is on the west side with large exterior doors to help get large equipment into the room so you don't have to go down a narrow hallway and, and uh, mm -hmm. squeeze something through a door. This is a lot of glass uh, openness to it so that there's good visibility for when the uh, firefighters are in there exercising. If someone has an issue, they're visible. Um, it can have some frosting on the glass so you're not staring at people, but uh, I think it's a closed close-knit uh, type of group. They want to see each other and know that they're in good shape uh, and, you know, not having issues. The kind of purple-blue area uh, is the office suite, and there are two parts to the office. There's kind of the public reception waiting area where the chief's office, fire investigation. Can you zoom in there a little bit, Adam? There we go. Okay. Uh, where they can come in uh, so that you have this open admin area waiting area with a conference room. Uh, the mechanical electrical room is centrally located in the building so that we have uh, shorter distances to panels uh, and devices. Uh, and then behind a secure door, uh, there is the officer suite and uh, the bullpen kind of general office area that is also attached to the day room. So there's a little separation of function there that was desired that we were able to provide. If you zoom back out a little bit, Adam, we can then show the main entrance, which includes a vestibule, the museum area for, for uh, placing some of the antique vehicles and some of the uh, incredible pieces that that you've got. Uh, along with the training room, which we are showing as a splittable space. So it can be uh, a, a moving partition can be splitting the space in half. Uh, if you need to have a special meeting like an EOC uh, and breakouts, there's the ability to divide that room. And 
that uh, area also has three single user public restrooms uh, along with storage for the training room and a centrally located IT room. So those are the basics of the footprint of the building. Uh, the main entrance has that big arrow pointing to it. Uh, and that's where we've also got large doors for bringing in the antiques, which if they're used in parades and so forth, there will be a need for bringing them in and out occasionally. Uh, and that's what those large doors allowed to do. Um, and that's where the accessible parking would be required. Uh, so uh, any questions about the internal layout of the building, which I think the chief um, I know we showed it to you and talked to you last week, made some more adjustments. Uh, do you have any additional feedback that you'd like to mention at this time? I don't, I just, uh, I uh, well done. It looks good. Yeah. Question. So can you point to where, so if I'm the public and I'm coming into the fire station, where, where will I enter and how far can I go? And if I'm, if I'm meeting with anybody in the fire department for an administrative reason, will I be led into the purple area or will I be meeting somebody in another place? That's that's a great question. I think operationally, uh, it's a question for the chief of whether there are certain doors unlocked during the certain time of day, but you would come into the vestibule as uh, Adam is pointing out, into the vestibule, and, you know, it could be open during uh, business hours for people to come and look at the museum artifacts and so forth. But as you go down the hallway uh, towards the west, there is the door on the left that leads into the admin area. Uh, so it's the chief's prerogative to have his uh, office open during the business hours uh, and take incoming visitors and, and, and deal with them that way. That's my understanding. Uh, Chief, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sorry, say it one more time, Katrina. I, uh, where where it's highlighted there uh, that Adam is showing the area that uh, someone off the street, if they're looking to meet with you or anyone in your office, they would come into the area that way. That's correct. They would be, uh, uh, they would go in the vestibule and then they would be led into the uh, office space. So someone would... Uh, come from the office space, go out to the vestibule and let them in. Is that the that, idea? It's not ideal, but because of the, the layout of the land and, and, and maintaining the, the shortest amount of run for the firefighters to get to the apparatus, that's, uh, that's the best way to accomplish that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions about the layout uh, and the organization of the plan? Okay, I do want to mention. I'm relative... sorry. You know, go ahead, Katrina, please. Katrina, can I ask a few quick questions? Yes, please. One is just, I'm what? What the heck is a bullpen? I've heard it on TV so many times. I had no idea it was a real place. Okay, Chief, would you please yeah, answer? I, I, I'll explain that. So when when the, original, that's a question for when the, the chief, original but... plans were 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 sent to take a look at, there was a, a space within all the offices that. Uh, was just an open space that really didn't utilize the space well. Um, so by taking one of the offices and taking that middle space, if you will, and making it open, we put what we call a bullpen. What this does is allow us to have uh, a space that's like cubicles and whatnot for the privates to do their reports um, and uh, gives us more opportunities for more spaces for desks. Uh, so you'll see that the administrative wing, uh, although it's not a bullpen, uh, the administrative wing has uh, the administrative assistant had her own office and actually going to open it up. And then anybody that comes in uh, can be sent into any of the offices that they need to. And on the on the operation side, the bullpen gives us more opportunity for more spaces for the firefighters to conduct their normal report writing and, and whatnot. Well, thank you. That was just a curiosity question. So that, that's kind of what that's great to know. And then I'm assuming there's some kind of slope on the property. So that's why there's a ramp that goes from the, um, the orange section down 
to the bays. That is and correct. why the patio is a two tier. That is correct. Looks like it, okay. Yes. So the, um, the height difference between those two levels is, I believe, two feet. Is that it? Um, yeah. Correct. Yes. Well, I see like three or four steps, so I figured it was something like that. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. And so that patio is that kind of an extension of the kitchen, and that's for the firefighters, correct? That is correct. Okay. Um. I think. I mean, it's a lot to take in. Thank you for for presenting it all, and uh, just making sure I kind of understand it. Sure, we'll get into so. a little bit more. Uh, so, uh, as we keep going and uh, Adam, if you could shift the plan over to the right, I do want to share the mezzanine information. No other way. There you go. <laughs> the little yellow Thank plan you. you see on the left is the mezzanine. So that occurs above the radio report. Uh, SCBA mechanic work room that's kind of central to the base. And this is up about 10 feet. Um, so there's a stair in the middle that leads up to that. Um, so that's just shown off to the left. It's open. There are training um, features built into that. Uh, so it's very compact and centrally located helps the bay and the structure. I wanted to get to the structure particularly. I know that what you're seeing on the uh, floor plan are a bunch of jogs uh, throughout the building, but they are very intentional uh, related to what we anticipate doing for the roof and the facades and the structure to make as much of the structure as repeatable and the same sizes of steel so that when we get to the construction of it, you don't have 50 different types of roof joists. It's down to very you know, the fewer most repeated things is going to bring economy to the project. Uh, so, and uh, I do want to ask if there are any other questions on the floor plan before we get to some uh, 3D views. Okay, uh, Chairman, I'm not... I was on mute. <laughs> okay. I don't have a question. I just want to say how really good I think that layout is. It is a very compact, well done, well drawn out, everything considered. I know you worked a lot with the chief on it. So good job, all of you. I it it to me it looks great. So hopefully we don't have to do any changes to it or anything going forward. But right now it looks fabulous and thank you for the good work. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, and chairman, if I don't hear any other questions on this, we do want to proceed. I think, uh, Adam, our next sheets are the 3D views. So, uh, in response to questions about making sure we had context uh, about the, the images on here, and please do not think about colors at this time. We're not talking about colors. <laughs> We're talking about shapes and volumes and structure uh, and materials. Uh, that fit the idea of the site, this being very particularly the gateway and entrance to your community. Uh, we've heard a lot of comments from the building committee uh, about the desires, and we're hoping that we have addressed uh, it, at this stage the, the major points of making it something unique, uh, but lively, engaging, uh, historically reverent in some ways, but also modern. Uh, and certainly we want to talk about just general materials, uh, but we do have several views that of the modeling that we've done of our design with minimal materials. Uh, I'll bring that up for a point uh, in a moment, but we have a couple of different views. So this is looking from across Main Street towards where the entrance would be. And what you're seeing kind of in the center there is the main entrance. Uh, I don't know if you can zoom in there, Adam, a little bit so that they can see. We've got an image of a an antique. I don't know that that's the exact one you have, Chief, uh, but something of that nature that would be visible from the street as people are driving in and out of the community. Uh, they'll be able to see the portions of, of the museum that are right there in the glass. But as you can see off to the left, if you zoom out a little bit, uh, those are the bunk room windows facing the parking lot. 
and then further down where the roof pops up, that is the kitchen. That's part of the day room uh, living area. And then the, the patio and then the base. Uh, and you can see the high roof of the mezzanine where we've got uh, a lot of natural light coming in with those high windows above the mezzanine. Uh, so what you see on this, uh, we also took into account the, the request and it makes a lot of sense to have great signage on the building. There's lots of opportunities here uh, and it can be rearranged and so forth. This was our first kind of shot at, this is what we think makes sense. So if you can go to the next view, Adam, I would appreciate that. So this is coming into town. So we can see Athens Pizza on the right. Um, and you do see quite a bit of the building because of that large open parking area uh, right before you get to the building. Whether the trees that are uh, along the the main street stay there or not, we don't know. That's that's going to be something uh, for everyone to talk about and think about. Uh, but there's still a lot of visibility there. And actually, Adam, I would make the seal for the city if that's what ends up being on that face. I would make it larger. Um, or it might say, you know, city of Greenfield or something like that. But this is all food for thought. We want everybody to see what the massing of this looks like at this point in time with the footprint of the building accurately portrayed in context. We do have uh, one more image to share with the group. So this is, um, can you back out a little? Yeah, this is from downhill, uh, pretty much right in front of the Ford dealership looking at what you would see driving in to uh, the city even before you get to the main entrance. And we have shown here a large uh, Maltese cross on the upper portion of glazing uh, at the mezzanine, kind of at the end of where the mezzanine volume is, uh, but also showing the materials of the building. You can see there's uh, limited masonry and then uh, it's fiber composite panels, I believe is the right term for all of those vertical panels that you see there. And then the, the curtain wall glazing. Now what you can see kind of in the center between the greenhouse on the right and the back of the pizza place, that is where the, uh, the exercise room is. So there's a lot of high windows there, and natural lighting for that area. And the windows got bigger, <laughs> on the offices for the chief's request. So I think there'll be a lot of good, pleasant daylight coming in there and good views. Okay, and did we have another thing to share, Adam? I forget. We also have the um, photos that are relevant if we would like. Okay, well, before we get into the walk photos. Around you. Oh. oh, yes. Yes, correct. We have that. Yeah, Just one that. moment. Okay. Uh, so Adam's going to bring up a black and white uh, model view kind of swinging around it. So you get an idea of the, the volume of the building. Excuse me. I'm not certain how the video will translate through WebEx, so we will see. Right, there may need to be, uh, if it doesn't translate well, I think there is a setting, Adam, that you can uh, do on the share where it says uh, uh, apply for video or something like that. But give it a shot. So this is along the east side coming from the uh, southeast corner, looking at the bays, the patio area, the kitchen and the bunk rooms and the main entrance. This is where the memorial area would be right in front. The training meeting room. And again, we just very roughly modeled out the neighboring buildings so that you can see in context what is visible currently from that side. And this is the west side of the base. OK, 
Okay. Thanks, Adam. Okay, I don't know if anybody wants to see that again. You can certainly vote to say <laughs> show that again um, if, if you like, but uh, I, I'd like to open it to questions. And I know we were uh, requested to bring photos of museum areas and other types of spaces uh, that we have worked on and completed and built. Uh, so we do have those ready to share, but I do want to take any questions that the committee may have. I can't see everybody, so just say I have a question. There we go. So I have one question. This is Ed. So that's the final design that was decided on. This is the schematic design of the building that is meeting the chief's needs and is starting to discuss the exterior materials and has the volumes that are working for the chief. Uh, I don't know if that answers your question enough, but in terms of what you mean by final design, that's not construction documents going out to bid just yet. No, that isn't what I meant. I meant okay. the, 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 the uh, virtual image that you presented is what the building is going to look like when you're done. That That is hey. what our current design is. Dennis, you wanted to add something? Yeah, maybe. We still <laughs> have the whole committee to weigh in on this. Yes. Okay. This, this is our presentation of what we've designed to put to date. Okay, thank you. Um, so in that event, um, how does this proceed? You're giving us some images and suggestions. At what point do we be, become more hands on and start to have more specific discussions and actually make a decision? Uh, in terms of deciding uh, some of the material characteristics, uh, which we're not at the point of deciding yet. Uh, we still need to get through uh, working with our consultant engineers on structure and mechanical systems, et cetera, that are going to inform some of this design. You know, there are gonna be little tweaks and changes based on what uh, they need to put into the building, but for a large part, the look, the shape uh, are in this direction. So, if there are concerns from the committee about materials, and again, I've only talked very briefly about those exterior materials. Um, you know, we're not talking about interior finishes. We're talking about how the economy of the building is is formed by the shape and those materials. So, you saw um, masonry, and this is concrete blocks, uh, a veneer, and then the fiber cement panel all of which are intended to reduce cost uh, from a fully masonry building, uh, as well as the glass in appropriate areas. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, Jen. I think it all looks great. And I think, um, you know, I am really impressed with what you've been able to do on a site with a lot of constraints. Um, and I hope that the, you know, obviously the thing that matters is that the firefighters sort of get a building that works for them, not just in parts, but, you know, in terms of the flow and stuff. And I love that kind of corridor that my house has that too. I'm, I kind of think that way. <laughs> so I love it. Um, one thing, one concern that I have, I think the only concern that I have is um, just from the streetscape point of view. I mean, first of all, yes, those trees are a problem because they're not the right scale and that's a more street trees have a lot of issues, whatever, but also just from like an urban planning and design perspective, it's, it's a lot of wall for a street. Um, and, and I don't know what the desires are from the behalf of the personnel in terms of having windows or not for that training space, but sort of best practices in creating a more kind of friendly urban streetscape would be to have either, you know, the door oriented toward the sidewalk and or more window and just kind of a, ability to view activity inside. So I, it's that, that massing close to the sidewalk just concerns me from kind of a street, a, built environment perspective. Mm -hmm. no, that's great, thank you. Anybody else? I kind of um, oh. tag on to Jen's comment. This is Carol. Um, I echo, I really like the look of it. I like the lines. I love shed roofs and all the glazing and, and all of that looks fabulous. And um, on the site plan, it looked like there was more of a setback, but I'm assuming what you showed us 
in 3D or or at least the elevation, that is what it would look like from the street. So that setback is just the sidewalk and the right of way kind of area. Okay, that's a great question. I think uh, Adam, if you can pull up the site plan again, there's a little bit of space between the building and the sidewalk. Uh, and we had shown uh, a memorial area. I don't remember if we showed the actual sidewalk there. The so the sidewalk, I believe, is that gray area on the right that he's circling, and then that okay. would be grass. So there is area for memorial, et cetera. Um, so it, to... I was assuming there would be. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, it, it just seemed like it was much more on the street. In the, um, I'm not sure what number. Okay, what in number the image two. it was. Uh, yeah. I, okay, so there is some room for some landscaping. Maybe it was the other shot then from scale three. It just seemed like it was way, yeah, see there, to me, it looked like there wasn't much room. I was just <laughs> hoping that there would be some space to do some kind of landscaping and, um, uh, Again, echo what what Jen was saying. The I, I like the appeal. I love the seal as you're coming into town from the west, and the mm -hmm. sign. I, I'm a huge fan of good signage. Um, so and and yeah, adding some more glazing in the meeting rooms might be a you know a great way to do something, but but also some landscaping if possible. I know that's sure. always like the last thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great to talk about it now, and we want to we want to hear all of this. Um, so thank yeah. you for that. No, thank you. This is great. And if I may, I, I did have one one more question. I'm sorry. I think that someone else was trying to talk, but should I just keep going? Yeah, I'm going. Um, go. no, with the with the mezzanine, is that? I, I was trying to learn a little bit about the unique factors that go into a fire station, and 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 it it is a lot. Um, so, but is that because of is it hose drying, or you need the that space? I guess I'm just getting at, I'm, I'm wondering the purpose of the mezzanine area. It is a great, great way to, to capture some cheap space at an incremental cost that we can use for training regimens, storage, like you said, hose drying. There's so many things you can do there at such an incremental cost because of the height of the base that it just pays to create it. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, that's that's excellent. I'm glad it's you know a a, a big benefit for a, a minor cost, and it looks very um, I don't know impressive when when you see it the scale of mm -hmm. it, especially with the two shed roofs. So very very nice. And I learned another thing. What was that called? The cross. Iron the Maltese cross. cross. I had oh, no the idea. Maltese that that cross. Was, cross right. So thank you for expanding my horizons. I'll shut up now. <laughs> Mayor Neil, you're going to add something because I think Jean is next. Go ahead. Okay. I, I just, I, I just had one concern that I wanted to raise, and it's out of mostly respect for all of the environmentalists. The trees along the main street elevation may be problematic for sight lines for trucks exiting and entering main street. So it's just one thing I'd like everybody to consider. I'm all for saving trees, don't get me wrong, but we really wanna make sure that both the traffic and the vehicles on Main Street, as well as the fire apparatus entering Main Street, that there are clear sight lines at the front of the building at the end of the response driveway, heading out onto the main uh, right away. And those, unfortunately, those trees may not survive. So enjoy, sorry. Enjoy them now. <laughs> exactly. Break your leaves now because next year they might not be there. Jean, you have something to add? I just wanted to say that all of the glass and, and the the ceilings and all of that look like it's going to be a fabulous place to work. It's gonna be friendly and all of that. I I just wanted to double check and make sure it fits within the budget of what we have to spend. Yes, Jean, that's a great question. And all along the way, uh, we've been working with Neil and our estimators to ask that question. Uh, and what you are seeing is what does fit currently in the budget. 
Mayor. Mayor. Let me get Mar let me let Marlo speak. Go ahead. <laughs> By all means, Mayor can go first if, no, no. if she wants. We'll come back to the mayor. I know that she'd like to probably finish the discussion. Okay. Yeah, just to uh, thank you, Neil, because that was my first thought when I saw that shot at the front of the building, the line of sight getting in and out. Um, and, and obviously we have the capability of uh, under ordinance and whatnot to replace trees and move trees or replant trees. So that's not an issue at all. And, and I think honestly, the maturity of them trees, I'm real familiar with them. Um, uh, you know, they may have to go anyways because of the line of sight. And then we could always dress that tree belt in another way and whatever grass belt, grass belt is at the front of the building before the sidewalk. So uh, thank you for bringing that up, Neil. That was my first thought when I saw that shot. Thank you, Mayor. I will take my opportunity to speak. Uh, I don't have to wind it down. I, if other people want to speak, I'm I'm okay, if you're okay, David, but uh, so yes, I was gonna talk about budget and trees and, and Jean and Marlo have uh, beat me to the punch, but I did wanna make, remind people that there's a finite number of designs that we could have given our budget. Um, so I think right now they've done a great job and I agree with all the comments that have been made here. Uh, as far as trees go, let me just put in a good word for trees because <laughs> that's what I do. Uh, the library took a whole bunch of trees. And uh, the, uh, or will by the time it's done. Uh, I can't recall on the landscaping plan of the library where they were replaced on that property or if they were, but I don't believe so. Um, so there are people in Greenfield who prefer that we keep good trees on Main Street, um, and I'm one of them, but I also understand the safety issues that you're talking about. So uh, be prepared to plant a tree on that grassy area as part of your landscaping plan. Or relocate one that's already there, but if the I, I'm I, I'm not that familiar, not as familiar certainly as Marlo is, um, with the with the age of the trees. So it might be be easier to plant a a decent sized tree and watch it grow then. Marlo, uh, Marlo and then Jen. Yeah, I think the easiest. We, we lost that sycamore at the top of Main Street. It's like, you know, there are there are beautiful trees that are more appropriate to the scale of these buildings that yeah. we should be replacing with. So it, it's a great opportunity to do something that is like majestic instead of kind of torpy. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> Be tree. <laughs> okay, Marlo. I think the, the simplest and easiest way to get through if there's four tree removals, we, we replant four. And I'm not saying necessarily on the site, but... No. Um, you know, we, we find a way we do have the tree grant. Um, we planted another 80 trees this fall. So, uh, we have plenty of opportunity to more than make up for the 4 trees, I guess, is what I'm trying to put out there. Thank you. Thanks for that discussion. Anything else? Any other yeah, David, this is Dennis. I have a suggestion <clears throat> for the committee um, and whether it be trees or landscaping the cupola or the memorial. Um, I think that whole front area would be a wonderful place, um, you know, for the community to kind of decide what do you really want it to be and how do you want it to blend into the building, the community, and, you know, put some real thought there, uh, whether it's low landscaping, signage, memorials, cupola, trees. Um, that's a real place you can have an impact and, and spend a little time thinking about how you would like that you know, to, to be the approach to your community. Thank you. So can I ask a question? Please. So can, uh, is there any way to bring up the side or the front of the building again? Adam can do that. Especially the side of the building. Which side? Uh, the the main, main side, the one facing uh, right there. That yeah. one right there. 
So can can we do a, a or have a little explanation um, how the uh, overall design is in reflection to the utilization of the space um, and why that this design uh, has more of an impact on um, based off of the space being used versus something such as a, a more traditional looking uh, colonial style building that Greenfield is accustomed to for a fire department. Uh, so specifically, there is a lot of feelings uh, out there that the fire station should look rust, you know, maybe not rustic, but colonial, um, traditional style look, uh, which I think the back of the building looks like that. I think people will easily get hung up over the colored design of the building, the, the gray and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but can you can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, how the how the actual utilization of the space kind of dictated some of the design on this? Sure, uh, I'll ask Dennis to help me out a little bit, but I'll take a jump in here first. Uh, certainly, the entryway being a lofty space uh, with a lot of visibility that lent itself towards this uh, large glazed volume. Uh, and as an entrance area, it should have this emphasis of this is the important thing. So that informed that the height of it and adjacent to that, you've got that large meeting training room that also needed height for the volume where you have a large number of people. Um, and I know we didn't show low glazing. Part of that is intentional, but that doesn't mean it's rolled out. Um, just to have people who are in there focused on the work that they're doing and they will need a lot of surface area. Uh, on which to have presentation boards, maps, et cetera. Um, so we can work with that, that's detail. But the volume itself needed to be larger, needed to be taller. With the smaller, more uh, close, close space, uh, the bunk rooms, we don't need high ceilings, we don't need lofty uh, spaces there. It should be comfortable, close uh, spaces for the comfort, and, the, and we're talking about the physical health of the of the firefighters, as well as the mental health of the firefighters, giving them some spaces that are tailored to them, to their use. And as the chief said, the functionality of having those spaces directly lined up so that they can get into the bay gives, you know, lends us to having that smaller, shorter portion, that volume in the center of the building. Then we've got that, uh, the volume where the kitchen day room, living area, and exercise room for the lighting, popping up that volume to get the, the uh, windows up high to get the light deep into the space, not only good for lighting and energy use, but also for that comfort factor. This is their home away from home. Uh, the bays, I think, are pretty straightforward and self-explanatory uh, to the chief's point in terms of how that uh, looks relative to, let's say, something that's more historic. You've got more masonry there, um, but we wanted to be sensitive to both concerns, you know, not just the historic nature of what the community is used to, but also looking to the future, which, uh, you know, we're hearing a lot about the community being future looking, you know, forward looking. Dennis, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, one thing I would add is when you have the number of types and types of spaces we have, so for example, like uh, Kate mentioned the lobby, or a high area such as the big meeting room, uh, higher areas such as the exercise kitchen day room, and then lower areas, when you start jumping up and down in volumes and roofs, to fit that into a colonial look, which is peaked roofs, you know, and traditional styles um, becomes number one, very expensive. Number two, kind of clunky. Uh, it's just, it's a difficult exercise. I'm not saying it can't be done, but I think, you know, in trying to keep with budget and not being clunky and including the light that everybody's talked about, those are not necessarily, you know, traditional elements and don't fit well 
into traditional kind of volume, if you will. So I hope that answers some of the questions. Yeah, so if I could follow up uh, and, 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 and ask additional questions on that. You know, we're looking at the front of the building, and one of the one of co few of the comments that were made in previous meetings was the amount of volume of glass, and and, and we didn't want to see uh, a big full glass structure. So the, the training room area was was a lot less glass and and more brick, but yet our our museum wanted access to be able to see from the outside, uh, and so that's why the glass is incorporated there. Um, and so I don't know if you want to make any comments about that, but how did that go into your design thinking process with that? Right, Chief, I think you're, you're hit the nail on the head, uh, certainly with higher visibility areas that engage the community, uh, which you're all about engaging them, having a place for them to understand and know what the fire department does have places for the meetings. Um, the openness of that glazed area at the main entrance is important to show that. So I, I, I'm going to follow up with this comment. Um, so uh, myself and several firefighters here have spent a lot of time looking at fire fire, fire stations, you know, new fire stations that are being built and, 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 and whatnot. And whether it's the city of Boston or Seattle or New York City, uh, very historic areas are building firehouses of a more modern look instead of a traditional uh, firehouse. Uh, and so that this is design like this is not uncommon for what we're seeing for, for modern fire stations. Um, and I think it's important to highlight that. Um, I am concerned that there will be a lot of discussion of a look like this versus a more traditional looking firehouse. Uh, however, um, with the space design and how you have the space laid out for the high ceilings and the, the peaks and the amount of volume of light in the apparatus for, uh, I really like this design. Um, uh, you know, I will, now that we have pictures, we'll let the firefighters take a look at it and have them comment as well. But uh, I just want to say well done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief. Anybody else? I'd like to ask a question, David, Mayor. Yeah, please. So, um, we don't have to do it today, but I would at some future meeting like to address those areas where signage is, particularly the one that has the big 3-9 on it. Yes! <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. So if we could have a, uh, if we could set aside part of a future meeting to just discuss some, you know, and get thoughts from the committee on what we might like to do with those walls that we do have access to. I like the seal on the other side a lot, but I may, I may have a thought or two about how it could be moved around to the front too, so. Um, not that I necessarily have to have it there, but I, I'd like for us to be able to have an opportunity to uh, address that. Okay, uh, Jean, did you have something to say? Oh, sorry. It's yes, Jean and I, I wanted to say that we had one of the most beautiful fire stations before, especially when it had the arch doors, et cetera but it didn't work for the firemen. And that's the part that we have to keep reminding the community is mm -hmm. we want this fire station to work as a home and a place that they can do the job they have to do uh, instead of having the most uh, quaint looking fire station that could ever exist. Thanks, Jane. Uh, Question, David. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Dennis, on the on the front roof line, can that be turned around so the highest point faces Main Street? It sort of looks like looks like the way it's facing. It's the building is facing the parking lot, not not Main Street. I mean, we can look at it, Butch. The reason we did that was to accentuate the entrance. 
So we define <laughs> where the entry actually is. That's why it was and, done that way. We'll take a look at it. And be able to incorporate the museum in a way that people see that before they see the entrance. You know, I think if that Roxanne brought up the 39 and that's what drew my attention as well. Um, I think if there was like, you could do the address more linear down on something else in the front of the building. In the very um, front of the building. Right. The entrance but on that the wall, entrance. it would be awesome to have something, I, I'm saying image, but I, I don't know what the right word is, but um, no doubt that this is f firefighters. Like you have images of 9-11 or something like that, whether it's a plot, plaque or a, something bronze, I don't know. Um, but, you know, there would be no doubt that this is where firefighters are. Well, that uh, Maltese, Maltese cross would go a long way to help that out. Katrina? Uh, yes, I do want to uh, bring up something, Liz. Thank you for mentioning uh, a memorial specific to 9-11. Yeah. Uh, we are aware that there is going to be a piece of steel. I don't know if it's already in possession, uh, but that is something that we will integrate into the plans inside the building. Uh, so there is a place for that piece of steel to go. Okay, so yes, Carol, go ahead. Sorry, I was trying to get the mute button. Um, thank you. I had a couple other quick questions because it sounds like this is really our opportunity to provide input on the design that it's kind of set. But anyway, w one of my questions and without seeing the plans, so that I guess might be my first question is um, if we can get copies of what obviously I'm sure that's going to happen anyway, but but I, I, I hope the committee can have an opportunity to digest this a little bit more. Uh, one of the things that I just was thinking about is the bunks is kind of a private area and it's facing the public parking area. So I would say if there is space, which again, without seeing the site plan again, that I, I don't know if there's been discussion about some type of screening or landscaping that can provide some um, some break so that uh, there is more privacy there. But um, and. I wouldn't be me, I'm the energy director, if I didn't bring up that um, I was trying to let everything else come come out. And I know we already had, you know, the meeting with the MEP with the energy modeling and things. So I'm I'm under the assumption that this design comes out of meeting that those goals. Okay, I see two nods, I'm happy. Thank you. Yes. Feel free to expound. Yes, uh, I will add to that. Uh, we are having a meeting with all, the entire design team tomorrow uh, where we will be uh, starting to fine tune the systems. Uh, and I would say at the next meeting, we'll have an update for the committee that we can say, this is where we are with these systems. And if we have a question for the committee about uh, which way we're going, because I believe uh, at the end of those presentations, there were two options on the table. Uh, so we'll have hopefully some more information about that at the next meeting. And Carol, one thing I would like to add is with this design, we made sure there's plenty of room for rooftop solar. Plenty of south facing oh, you know, roof. That <laughs> is so great to hear, but the utility will not, they'll do, it's, it, it's, it's the future. There we go. Yes, we're, <laughs> yes. we're, we're building it's really tough to future. get the solar right there. <laughs> so, anybody else? So, from a planning point, oh, go ahead, Peter. Uh, I just wanted to kind of follow up on the chief's comments that uh, I really appreciate the work that Katrina and Adam and and Dennis have put into this. Uh, they've definitely taken the time to listen to our concerns regarding the space. And uh, I definitely support what they've come up with for a layout. I think it's going to work really well. And conceptually speaking, I love the design. So just thought I'd throw that out there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David, I do have one more thing. I know that in the last meeting, the committee had asked for images. I know we're at five o'clock already, uh, so I don't want to take this longer, but maybe at the next meeting we can show those images 
of the spaces that we have designed, uh, the memorials, the museums, et cetera. Uh, so perhaps that happens at the next meeting. Sure. Uh, yeah, I was going to talk about planning if, um, you know, signage landscape, if, um, you know, if the architects could help me know when those should be put on the agenda for discussion and what kinds of things people need to have ahead of time. Um, if we're moving at a good pace now, because we're going to go out to bid sometime in January or February, and we want to know what we're building, then um, just I, I'm, I'm going to count on you, Dennis and Katrina and Adam, to just uh, let me know when you know. Give me some sort of a schedule so I can know when to plan this, um, and I would appreciate that, David. Just a quick question to Dennis and team and Katrina. Is does this project um, have to be handled like the library project where we had to do pre qualifications for general contractors and subcontractors? Katrina, I can take that if you want. Please. The statute, the statute in Massachusetts requires that any contract with construction cost exceeding 10 million dollars pre qualification is mandatory. Under 10 million dollars, it is elective at the discretion of the awarding authority. So if the city decides for some reason they don't want to do the pre-qualification, you are not obligated to do so if your construction cost is under 10 million. Okay. And so if, if it if it's over 10 million, um we must. We must. Okay. Yes. So David, I just wanted to bring that up because I know how hard the library folks worked at pre-qualifying the, the uh, general contractors and they did have a subcommittee to do that. So you might want to think about if we have to do that, how it's going to be organized. I just wanted to throw that out there, David. No, no, thanks. So again, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not experienced with this particular thing construction. Um, so I need some help in understanding timing. I'm happy to shepherd everything and organize it for the committee, but I need, uh, you know, when would that discussion come up? Do you think it should come up at the next meeting to talk about whether we're going to be a pre qualified We're going to we're going to elect to do that or not, or uh, I don't know. Um, I, I think, David, if I may, I think the process should be. We should hone in on a schematic design to the point that Dennis and his team can do a cost estimate with some high degree of reliability with their estimator. And then we let the cost estimate drive the decision. If, okay. if the cost is greater than 10 million, then the answer is yes, and we'll set up the prequal. If it's less than 10 million, it's a definite maybe, and then it's up to the discretion of the committee. Okay. Okay. Sounds I only bring it up because I know how I know how much time and reading and effort was put in for the subcommittee to to do that part. So I just wanted to let David be aware it might be something that a lot of time has to be spent on. That's all. All right. Uh, David, keep an eye on that for me, will you? Neil, is there a minimum number uh, under the mandates that you have to pre-qualify? When you say a minimum number, do you mean a number minimum? Of contractors. In other words, no. you have to have at least three contractors who are pre-qualified to bid. Is it five, seven? The, the, the state likes to see a minimum of three. Um, and that require if for any reason you were light when you, it, it's all a public process. It's all a, it's an RFQ and there are responses to the RFQ. So in the event that you didn't get a minimum of three bidders for every subsection, you would have to re-advertise and duplicate the process for those sections only. Very, very common offenders are elevators. Mm -hmm. um, we do not typically get three bids for elevators. However, I believe this is a one story structure and we don't have to worry about that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Anybody, anybody else on this? We're kind of moving around here. <clears throat> Peter. So I just had a procedural question as to. Uh, We've seen the design that's been come up with. Um, how do we go about moving forward on that? Do, do we want to have a process to submit comment or debate comment or accept or 
or why? I don't have the answer, but it's a good question. And it sounds like, uh, you know, things are, that, that's, that's an important part of moving forward. I don't know. I, again, I don't have experience with a construction committee, so. Max, how'd you do the library? How did I do the library? How did, Mayor, I'm asking her how they did the library and did that process work? It well, work well, okay, yeah, I was gonna say, David didn't do the library. Uh, a couple of people on this meeting were very involved. Uh, Amy Mascaratolo, Jean Wall, uh, and to a certain extent myself. Uh, it was a little bit, it was quite a bit different process, but um, in many ways, um, in other ways, it wasn't terribly different at all. We started with more than one design to take a look at, uh, but a library, as has been pointed out this evening, does not have the same kind of interior requirements necessarily that a fire station does so that the actual design works with what the flow and the needs of a the particular needs of a fire station are. So, Peter, if you're asking, um, I think there should be some comment time, certainly for the firefighters to be able to take a look at it. Um, not just a couple of you, three of you that are here and to pr provide feedback and so forth. So I don't know how we would make I mean, I know how you could make that happen, but if you want it to be a public meeting type of thing, then there should maybe be an opportunity to have that kind of a meeting. Um, and I do think that there probably probably would want to have a more finished, not that the design itself doesn't look finished, it certainly does, but like we, we discussed signage. So I think the community, is going to want to know what they what's more about what it's going to look like uh in just in terms of the signage because i do i personally like the way it announces itself coming up the street and certainly along main street and then you know there's the area above the uh, doorway that can be a little more subtle and perhaps have the address on it or whatever but uh so if Jean or Amy Mascaratola wants to weigh in on this in terms of community input and so forth, um, I'm happy. To, I, if David, if you're happy to have one or the other of them weigh in, I'm, I'm, I don't care. That'd be a good idea. I think, I think it, go ahead, Jen. I think that that probably deserves more time than we have here yeah. today. And I think it deserves to be on the agenda as a, you know, or something. And I think I just, it, it's probably the point in the process as with the temporary station where we need a little more meetings and a little more like not waiting a month. And, and we also may need to separate some of like the heavy hard processes, you know, like from some of those more discussional yeah. things. So I'm just, um, I don't, I think we could spend a lot of time talking about that process, but it might deserve just a little more yeah. thought. Um, yeah, us, we, yeah, we do need to talk about colors and so forth of the other materials there. I personally like the red brick. I think it makes a very referential statement to the previous building. And of course, I did put in my two cents worth about red red bay doors. So I probably uh, given up all of my rights for anything else. <laughs> okay, so this is great, great discussion. Sounds like we're, it's perfect timing. Um, Butch and I will meet or uh, we'll talk and we'll talk with the mayor, Neil, Dennis, and we'll see what we can come up with in terms of presenting you something at the next meeting that we can start to see an organizational timeline about what's going on. So we'll be happy to do that. Uh, the next meeting is going to be, um, what's the date? I don't have the calendar. It's the second Thursday in November. And then the fourth Thursday in November is Thanksgiving. So how do we want to deal with that? Yes, Carol. The second Thursday is actually Veterans Day, so the city will be closed. Oh, just an FYI. There you go. I think um, I think yeah. we may try to switch that to one. So we have some date problems for November. We do, um, and it, it, just keeping in mind that yeah, there are holidays that come and go in November. 
that is the only day that the city itself will not be working. Not so necessarily for firefighters, but. Well, um, you won't be Thanksgiving either. Yeah. So can, because it's right already. now, if, if I were to say we could switch it to the Wednesday is at four o'clock, is, is anybody is speak out if that's a problem or, or I'll try to make it uh, those two Wednesdays. Go ahead, Jean. Well, we have school committee on the second Wednesday, so I can't mm -hmm. do that. But why can't we switch? Uh, why can't we switch with the library people who aren't meeting so much now and take oh, the first and third Thursday? Okay. Hey. Guess we'll have well, to we talk to still, somebody. Wouldn't we still have a problem with the third Thursday? No, that's the fourth Thursday. Sorry. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, Mayor, can you make that executive decision right now about the switching of the dates? Chief, well, is there something you want to add to that? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I would just... I would prefer that you discuss it with Tim Farrell and Ed and make sure that they don't have some burning need for meetings on those days. Okay, all right. <laughs> I mean, I'm okay with it if they don't. Let me put it that way. I want you to use your executive power to say this is for everybody. <laughs> I have me. I don't. I don't want to negotiate with anybody about something that's not my thing to negotiate. Well, so you want me to talk to Tim and Ed about it? Got I it. want you to tell Tim and Ed that that's what we're going to do. Okay. <laughs> because we're we're in a faster mode now. We have to have these meetings. And I would agree. And I, I don't that. think I don't think it'll be a problem, but I'll do that. All right. I, I see people. Uh, Butch. Uh, just a question for Dennis. Dennis, when when do you need us to kind of finalize this thing so you can get moving? Uh, it's a good question, Butch. At this point, what we're going to do is is again we're going to look at the entry as as we talked about. Um, we're going to start talking to the team to make sure that the shapes, the volumes, you know, things like that are all working in in harmony and in unison. So that when we come back to you, we can come back with something that's a little bit more finalized. We're still going to stay away from color, but we are going to have materials, um, pictures for you to look at. Um, but for now, I think, you know, the best things you guys can do is start thinking about memorials, cupolas, signage, know, land, signage landscaping, so that we can concentrate on the building. You concentrate on that stuff and then we'll put it all together. Yeah, I was thinking more in, in terms of your timeline. What, what, is, what do you need for a jump off date to sort of meet our our end, uh, end game here uh, as it relates to the temporary and getting out of there, getting the building built? All right, well, we locked Kate in her room yesterday, so I'm gonna let her address that because that's all she did yesterday. <laughs> Go ahead, yes, Jay. so looking at all of the work that we have ahead of us, uh, and I know everybody's thinking about schedule and when it goes out to bid, I'm still confirming with all of our consultants uh, when they can get this done, realizing that the closing of the uh, purchase uh, uh, on the property there happened much later than was anticipated. Uh, so that is pushing us a little bit. We didn't have the sign off until later uh, than was anticipated, but we are in a good place with the development of the plan and the volumes uh, to work for the fire department uh, so that we're aiming for spring and working back from there we will have incremental stages. I'll break it more out in the next meeting. Uh, and we're already starting to figure out those nuggets, those uh, points in time where the committee has the information in front of them, has been starting to think about the different parts, the signage, the light, and so forth, so that we are already in the, in the process of jumping off, to answer your question, Butch. We are already jumping off with the plan and the volumes with our design team because we have to. We we can't wait on that portion. Uh, we have to move forward with them. But as Dennis said, they are going to have little impacts, fine tuning that will come back in the plan and you will see in successive pre presentations. Jen. So can we just maybe do the thing that we were doing at the temporary station and put 
like some additional meetings on the calendar and we can cancel them if we need to, you know, that Monday slot, which we were using, we're not using for the temporary anymore. Just to get, I mean, this is a hard time of year in November, December. So if we have those held, whatever they end up being, push the library, whatever, um, then we don't have any issues and we can guarantee we're not going to hold up the team on the timeline. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, the first Thursday is next Thursday, so that's to, to get to get to the place where I was hoping we'd get to in two weeks. I don't know if we can, but um, all right. So we'll do. We can do a four p.m. Thursday next week. Fire. We can hold Monday the eighth for fire at four. I mean, we could just hold these dates so people can just put them in their calendar, so we don't have to grab people. David, I'm not available Monday the 8th. It's Neil. Okay. Neil, do you think it's okay if we have a meeting anyway without you? Absolutely. I'll miss you though. I understand. Um, the, then there's the, then I had the 11th, which was the second Thursday. You want to keep that? Oh, no, that's, that's, that's good. Veterans Day. Uh, Monday the 15th. Less people complain. I'm just writing these in. And then the, but 18th, I had the you had the 4th. Was there a 2nd 1 or is Monday the 15th? The 2nd 1. No, there's the 4th, the 8th, the 15th, Eight. and then the 18th. And then we get to okay. take a break. Then we get to take a break for Thanksgiving. Okay. So that's 4 I, meetings. Okay. I won't be able to attend the 1 on the 8th. I don't think um, I have an appointment at 4. And ways and means starts at 530. All right, these are dates that are just being kept open. Yeah. Um, but I don't have them to on our calendar. That was a good good thinking, Jen. Um, and the same with the architects and everybody. So okay. um well, I was thinking that you know, by the fourth to come up with a plan, I don't know if that's possible. So we'll use the fourth just to keep going. And it might open some more things up so that we start taking making lists of things and then by maybe maybe we have the meeting on the 8th to actually do that hard work and see if we need to what we need to do on the on the 8th we could we can talk about the planning stages and then that'll give us two more meetings to 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 figure stuff out and hopefully by the end of the month you know we'll be we'll be somewhere yes chief so i i, I so I guess I'm just looking for a little clarity. So, um, the design stuff on the outside and colors and stuff like that in the mural, but the overall design of the building, are we going to meet um, prior to, I mean, how soon do we have to know that, like, if we don't like that entranceway, how, how soon do we have to know that we want it different? Uh, because I think that's something that has to be decided within a couple of weeks. Am I wrong? You're, you're not wrong, Chief. And what we're going to do is internally, if it can work, we'll let you know it can work. Uh, if it gets goofy structurally or creates problems we don't think we can solve, we'll let you know right away. We don't want you spending a lot of time thinking about something if we know ahead of time it won't work or if it will work. So we'll let, we'll just let you know. Yeah, I just want to, you know, make sure that people feel free to provide feedback of the overall design as we're moving forward. That's all. Thank you. It, it sounds like generally speaking, this next month will be for that, although it hasn't been organized specifically, but I think that's what the month is about. Um, so you can think about things along those lines. If you have something to say or something to think about, it may not be at the, we may not have decided what meeting we're gonna talk about it, but you know that this month you can get a chance to do that. So why don't we start with that premise unless, does that make sense? I'm, again, I'm, this is my first uh, rodeo for a construction project, so. You're doing great, David. Just <laughs> my natural organizational skills. <laughs> Well, I think, I think it's a great opportunity, like you're saying, David, uh, for these meetings in November. I know they will happen in quick succession, but uh, it will give everybody, I hope, uh, a chance to say something about whatever parts that they're most invested in uh, and have an interest in and have been hearing from the constituents about uh, so that we can fine tune this uh, and really get our teams uh, on the production road. Yeah, good. Okay. 
All right, so we've we've done that. We've 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 said yes, Jen. You waving? You're not waving. Not speaking. Okay. Hello to you. Um. So before we go, um, I know Chief. Do you have anything that you want to share about things that are happening at the uh, well, things that are happening at the uh, old fire station? I know that. Uh, Kubla came down and anything else going on there? Is, is, are you busy right now? Looks like he is. I feel like the guy in the nightly news. We'll be back to you, Chief. Um, <laughs> and the other thing um, that we hopefully all know is that we are the owners of a piece of property. That closing happened last week. So let's pat ourselves on the back. And this is why we can uh, look forward to doing all these wonderful things that we're talking about tonight. So hip hip hooray for that. Um, Sounds like the chief had to go, so uh, we can talk about that. Thank you, Adam. We can talk about that next time, uh, the, how the status is continuing at the old fire station. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I don't think there's anything else on the agenda that I need to talk about. David, I, I apologize for that. I had a, a, an emergency call. Sure. Uh, chief, you're uh, the fire what, chief. What was the, what was the question? Uh, when did you get your last haircut? No. Um, <laughs> what? what uh, what, um, what, if anything, tell us about what's happening at the old fire station. Some things happened this week that I wanted you to share maybe with the committee. Uh, sure. Uh, I apologize for that. It's uh, such as working in an active firehouse. Uh, so, uh, the, the demolitions going forward from the stance of, of, uh, things important to us, we were able to capture the historical items that we talked about. So we have in our possession, the poles, um, we have in our possession uh, an old split door uh, that was hung upstairs. Uh, we have some other artifacts, if you will. The biggest thing that happened this week um, was yesterday the cupola was removed from the building uh, and brought to a, a location within the community uh, where it's been uh, shored up um, and put in a place where it's it's safe uh and uh there was no damage done to it as it came off the building uh with the exception of one board on one side uh the company that took it down did it really uh really good job and was professional about it um it is much larger than it looks like when it's sitting on top of the building <laughs> uh so with the with the weather vane that will be the actual uh, directional part of the weather vane, not the weather vane itself. When that's put back on it, we're talking over 20 feet tall. Um, so it's pretty impressive to stand next to when it was on the ground. Uh, but it's in good condition. Um, the mural that uh, the 9 11 mural was able to be taken off and uh, done in so that it's one piece and they did not have to take it apart. Uh, mm. So that is good news. So that is intact and safe and wrapped, uh, and that will be taken to a location within the city uh, where it's actually, I believe, going to be housed indoors. Um, and so uh, everything that we've was important that that we kept uh, to incorporate into the new building is in uh, safekeeping. Uh, the last thing was the cornerstone was removed. The cornerstone in it had in uh, in concrete a uh, time capsule. That time capsule was opened uh, this past week. Um, we had a couple retired firefighters that helped us with the move. We kept it very small because of COVID and some other concerns. Um, but we had some firefighters come in and retired firefighters come in and we opened it. Unfortunately, it was mostly paper. Uh, and moisture got in there and everything was wet. However, there were several documents that part of it was was able to be saved and, 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 and looked at, uh, but it was pretty interesting to have it open um, by the grandson of the fire chief who put it in the cornerstone. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so that was that was pre pretty, pretty good and pretty touching um, to see that. I wish the stuff was preserved better. It is our hopes that we will be able to reproduce this as well as our own time capsule with the new building. Uh, but the cornerstone is still intact and, uh, and hopefully it will be used in the museum part of it, uh, of the firehouse, the new firehouse. Um, 
and so yeah it's it, it went pretty well good thank you and on a good note all right anything else any other business i hear a motion to adjourn please so move back up rita gartner okay if you're in favor of adjourning please say aye mayor aye butch aye chief aye dave aye Carol. Aye. Amy. Aye. Steve. Aye. Jen. Aye. Liz. Aye. She probably says aye. David. Aye. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Meeting is adjourned. We'll see you all next next week for sure. We'll see you on Thursday at four o'clock. Good meeting. Thank you.